You've seen the world of real estate developers. You've seen the world of real estate consumers. Today, we take a walk through into an important layer in between, the real estate broker. And to talk to us about that uh, is one of the key real estate brokerages, HomesFi. It does 1650 crores worth of sales. Uh, to talk to us is the entire management team. I've got Ashish Kukreja, I've got Mukesh, Neha, Sandeep and Shitaj. They'll take us through the entire journey of a real estate brokerage. What's the model like? What's the competition? How do they read the market? And this is a company that's going to get listed on the NSE SME exchange. Uh, Ashish, uh, startups are the flavor of the last one year. Uh, you're not really a startup in that way. You started in 2011. What is it that got you excited to start a real estate brokerage in 2011? It's actually very funny, Vishal. Uh, usually, if you ask any startup, they'll answer you that, you know, they were trying to do something and they faced some problem and, and they went into this business to solve that problem. That was not the case with us. You know, uh, nothing bad happened to us that, that got us into broking business. We were in financial services, wealth management uh, and at that time, you know, it was a peak of global meltdown and most of our customers were looking for hard assets. That's when, you know, some of the customers wanted us to give them real estate solutions. And it just happened to us. And when we got into it, Vishal, we realized that there were so many common sense things which were missing in the sector. We could, we could really feel that, you know, why the basics are not being followed. And we, when we started doing it, we started getting some great results. And then one thing led to another. So what's the... One example of this common sense solutions that are being ignored, which you entered, you saw that this can be solved easily. Actually, a lot of things. For example, the way the customer needs information was very broken. It's a big decision for someone to have a decision. They need information in a sequence and they need information at a critical time. They didn't get it. I, I can think of so many things, you know, we were the first brokerage at very early stage while we were just probably 5-10 of us, we started implementing CRM. We started making CRM uh, because we, we knew that if we have to service our customers, we will have to control our journey. Karna uh, so, you know, while brokers were dealing on Excel sheets, we were dealing on, on our CRM. I can, I can think of many random examples, you know, we had this missed call service at that point of time wherein we had given this service to a consumer that if he gives a miss call, in the next five minutes we will be you know, calling him and giving him his... So, that decision is such a knee-jerk decision. So, that kind of excess he was, was coming as a great support uh, to the consumer. And like I said, there was a lot of common sense stuff missing. We kept on solving it as we grow. Uh, and yeah, that's the journey. So, you started in 2011. When did you close your first deal and what was that deal? Oh, so, uh, uh, between, you know, jab humne, when we got into this space, uh, we were like uh, showing apartments all over the place and pehle chhe mene to kuch hua hi nahi. So, uh, but wo chhe mene bahut important hai. Agar wo chhe mene nahi hote, to shayad main aaj aapse baat nahi kar raha hota. And, uh, you know, my colleague, my co-founder Mukesh, I remember it was his probably second or third week. So I told Mukesh that we have to meet at the Hub Mall. So he told the customer to meet at the HUB Mall. That is how much we knew about the markets and the market. And I remember the first day, you know, we were all surprised. We were all surprised. We were all surprised. I remember the first deal, surprisingly, the first deal didn't happen in MMR. We did in Karjat. You know, so we were just all over the place, you know. And, but we learned our lessons. And after that, we got, we got into some very very good pro products and project from where the journey really picked up from uh, for us and and yeah. So Mukesh uh, Ashis spoke about your third week, second week journey, HB Mall. Now I'm sure you know all the malls of uh, Mumbai and MMR. Uh, in your view, how has the journey for a broker interaction with the developer changed in the last 10 to 11 years? How was it in 2011 So, in there was lack of trust and respect between both the entity. Uh, later on, when developer has seen the good work of us and then they realize there is a scope of strengthen the partnership with the uh, brokers. They have also started us aligning in their key uh, decisions, which has helped us to choose right product and offer to our client. I remember instance that a developer 
ट्रांजेक्शन हुए जा रहा था सबका फोकस था कि पैंतालीस हज़ार रुपये ले लो साठ हज़ार रुपये ले लो ट्रांजेक्शन कर दो नो बडी वॉज ट्राइंग टू डू द सेकेंड पेमेंट फाइव परसेंट पेमेंट लेके एक बार ट्रांजेक्शन को इन भी कर लो एंड एट दैट साइड एट दैट टाइम ग्रॉस टू नेट वॉज अराउंड थर्टी परसेंट फोर्टी परसेंट दैन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एसोसिएशन वी गॉट इन टू द डिस्कशन एंड वी हैव सजेस्टेड दैम कि आप ऐसा करो कि थोड़ा सा कुछ इंसेंटिव क्लाइंट को दे के और पाँच परसेंट का पेमेंट आप पहले ले लो तो उस, उस, उस उसको करने के बाद डेवलपर और हमारा दोनों का हमारा जो ग्रॉस टू नेट था वो नाइन्टी परसेंट तक पहुँचा और उन्होंने हमको अप्रिसिएट भी किया धीरे धीरे जैसी चीज़ें आगे बढ़ी हमारे सजेशन से लेके डेवलपर्स ने बहुत सारे टेक्नोलॉजी में भी चेंज किए जो हमको बाद में इनेबल करता है कि हम अपनी पूरी क्लाइंट की जर्नी को बुकिंग से लेके बिलिंग तक उसको मैनेज कर पाएँ दे आर इन्वेस्टिंग अस इन अ लॉट एंड आई सी लॉट ऑफ पोटेंशियल बिटवीन बिल्डर एंड इफ दिस एसोसिएशन कैन बी गुड एंड दोनों पार्टी मिल अगर ठीक से काम करें तो इंडस्ट्री के लिए एक बहुत ही अच्छा अवसर हो सकता है आशीष एवरी ब्रोकर आई मेट they say one thing about uh, the life of a broker when dealing with developers is paisa aa jata hai respect kuch nahi hai theek hai what is it that makes a white collar professional like you attracted to this dusty uh, chaotic messy world of real estate where broker respect is not that much and you should deal with characters who at least then were very unsavory there was uh, opportunity out there right and in in the sector there were good developers as well and they wanted to deal with good good brokerages out there you know and once they put confidence in us you know we carry their brand to the consumers they want to deal with brokerages who respect the brand right who who take the brand in a right manner in a right way communicate it well with the consumers and they really valued it uh, and going ahead uh, you know as the sector got consolidated and you know biggest developers beca- became more bigger they were keen that you know most of their uh, area around handling consumers getting them to to the site you know should be outsourced to pe- players like us you know and they increasingly wanted to focus more and more on creating good products you know improving their balance sheets you know and and they they were very keen that you know and and obviously they would want to do this only with uh, brokerages who who understand this requirement and who are also giving great value to consumers i repeat because we carry their brand to the consumers so it's very important for them so i think that's what uh, attracted us and we were fortunate enough that the way sector behaved in last 3 4 years you know uh, you know rera came gst happened demonetization nbfc crisis it was just back to back everything happening and and if everything was not enough then covid right so all this added up and the whole equation between us and developers really saw light of the day after all these events happened you know they understood our value we understood their value and i think we are just beginning the cycle to abhi payments come on time from developers or uh, it's still uh, sketchy you have to you have to keep chasing them paisa do paisa do Ap, they they come on time i must say that you know Uh, from last uh, couple of years it's it's improved a lot you know they are rarely very few you know where probably like what mukesh said that they have put technology in place processes in place which is around brokerages you know they want to make sure that see they also want our attraction uh, you know our attention i would say you know to make sure that we are uh, you know we are we are there uh, and we always discuss that we are like partners to them in a way you know so we need to behave like one you know we need to give that value to them and i think that's where uh, they have also understood the requirement of the sector they know that our cash flows are important if they if if they handle the cash flows well then only we'll be able to uh, do the good work and uh, barring few and we have a very uh, strict process uh, any project comes our way we do our audits we make sure that we Uh, we do multiple uh, discussions among us before we start any project what is the brokerage fee that uh, ranges for a broker at a blended level uh, average kya hota what's the model like i think uh, see base brokerage obviously in in the markets across is around 2 2% to 2.2 to 2.25% maybe yeah, right it is the, the base brokerage is also gradually going up you know because uh, developers also want to have a high coverage you know uh they want to have a lot of small and and mid size brokerages to be working with them so uh, they also work on base brokerages as as attract uh, to attract these agents i think uh, so base brokerages around this 
and I, if I have to give you a diluted number, it will be around 3.25 to 3.5 percent. Mukesh, uh, what is your mechanism for deciding on which project to take up uh, for marketing? Is there a bucket list? Is it more gut based? Uh, is it more brand based? What is it? So we have a process in place, uh, Vishal. Uh, we look at the product, we look at the location, we look at the pricing. Brand is also definitely matter to us because we are going to sell this to client and client should not face any issue. So there are three, four parameters which we follow. We see location, we see product. We also discover the pricing in and out in that area. And then we choose that product and take that product to our uh, client. Has it ever happened that you have a big developer, a big brand has come to you with an offering and you have said no because you think it will not work? Quite a time. Quite a few times? Yeah. So, so it's not that only brand matters. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Brand and is one of one of the, one of the factors, factors. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, I think we we are we are a very healthy mix of we belong to consumer and we belong to developer both. It's a very that's the business all about, right? So, uh, if 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 there is no value for a consumer, then you know we do almost uh, 25. Some in few months we have done even 30 percent of our business from referrals. You know, and the standard number is around 20, 25 percent. So, you know, uh, and uh, you know, we for us, the amount of uh, quality we can give to consumer is very, very important to us, right? You know, uh, in our internal measurements, uh, we are very uh, finicky about any consumer issue coming to us, right? So, for that to play out well, we need to be very sure of what we take it to them. You know, what what kind of value we give it to them. So, you know, and good thing with. With, with, with well run brokerages if I would have to say so is that we can show them around you know we are not committed to one project we can actually get the profile right for a consumer we never call our people who agents we call them advisors you know uh, the reason being that you know we are we are the one who are supposed to be a sh shoulder to them right if they are doing this one of the biggest decision in, of their lives we need to act as a shoulder we need to help them take that decision and never push our product. So, so that's the way we have. We take the same information back to the developer, and you know, encourage them to you know have a certain price point which will work well. You know, also probably give them inputs on certain features which may work well for for the certain product. And it's a very healthy win-win for all three of us. So, how long does it typically take from the first time you engage with the developer on taking up the project to closing it? So yeah, see, I, I think. Uh, the, when discussion starts, you know, like I said, you know, it's it's one layer after another. You know, we start talking about the product. Like Mukesh said, we visit, we we uh, we we get little sense of the pricing. You know, how is it looking like, and and kind of the target audience which which developer have in mind. Then we go back to our data, and because we have now huge data to to deal with, you know, we 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 have over twenty thousand, close to twenty thousand leads coming in the system. You know, we, we, we would be making around, I think, 40,000 calls in a month, maybe. So, you know, we, we speak to 40,000 people every month. So, so we do collect that data and we try to understand that, you know, what is that consumer is talking about that market, that product, that ticket size. And that's how, you know, we sort of, so I think it takes around a couple of weeks for us to conclude that this product or this project should work well for us and our consumers as well. Okay. And once you do a deal, how long does the, uh, what's the cycle? from you concluding a deal on behalf of a developer and actually getting the fee? Yeah, so typically it varies from 45 days to 90 days, you know. Uh, best case would be 45 to 60 days and, and the average case would be 90 days. So, so, you know, you do a booking, in next 10 days, you know, the first set of payments are done. Then next 30 days you have the registration, 30 days to 45 days register registration done. And then in next week we raise our billings and typically from there, some developers are like, they give us the checks next day some of them have a process so they take around four to six weeks uh, neha uh, you handle human resources uh, i think the industry that you are in you i think i, I don't think there's there's too much uh, i think it's probably the most niche field in real estate that you handle how different is it dealing with a employee who's a broker versus a non broker is the mindset of an employee, uh, is the mindset of a broker very different from anybody, any other community? I think our business, uh, Vishal, very rightly said, uh, mindsets, uh, you know, are very different here. Um, 
because one they're dealing with a lot of people it's it's a client oriented uh, uh, and a people oriented business you know our business is only about people uh, for the people by the people and of the people you know so like like you said uh, and and all of us would know that in the earlier times nobody chose real estate brokerage as a career path but uh, with awareness with you know uh, the kind of culture that is spreading across uh, i think the mindsets are changing uh, people want to get into the real estate brokerage if you go to campuses now you know they're absolutely gung ho about uh, coming to the real estate market uh, as such and the brokerage uh, particularly uh, we've been to the iits uh, the iit kanpur iit delhi and iit bombay we've also been to uh, the ims uh, like rachi and uh, trichy etc a uh, couple of campuses in bombay and pune as well now <clears throat> everybody is looking forward to be uh, one of amongst us we're also uh, you know taking a lot of because we say that we are a people oriented organization we take a lot of initiative around people we take a lot of initiative around our hiring our learning and development you know to create a career path from um, from uh, a caller to an agent to an advisor to a manager you know there's there's a career path that we are also giving them and and that's what they look forward to this was not available earlier you know so um, a lot of initiatives around that and i think that's making all the difference uh, also to tell you uh, we don't call our agents uh, our you know our people agents or employees we call them advisors be it sourcing advisors that we call it caller as such or or um, uh, an agent that we call an advisor so we don't never call them employees and uh, agents and um, and that's a practice that we've been following but does that does that really impact the way an employee works i keep i keep seeing designations uh, being the most common trick of companies paisa hi denge par aapko designation de dete hain ek bank branch mein teen employee hai ek hai vice president do vice president ek president so does that really make a difference in the mindset of an employee when you label him differently absolutely absolutely you know it's also the kind of respect that the organizations giving to somebody who's coming on board you know we we give you the learning and development we're working on your development we are working on how you are wanting to move ahead your the the personal aspects ambitions are all taken care of and how we are aligning those ambitions with the professional uh, aspirations so you know we the whole alignment sort of thing is is like a marriage you know you you may not uh, be a good match to a lot of people around but you will be a good match to a lot of people around so that's that's how we you know deal with people and because it is and i would also say that because we are we are dealing with human resources it is not always very easy i will not say that it's easy it, it is a it is a difficult task and that is why you know when we are saying uh, team building it's it's done day in and day out it's a commitment as such for the organization and all of us sitting here you know so we just can't say that we are doing something on a day one and doing the other thing on day two and forgetting whatever initiative we had taken on day one so it's it's a commitment and we keep to uh, do it recurringly and i will also say that you know um, the the best thing to do to let the others the new ones and the good ones to stay is to also let a couple of them go but there's a conversation that happens there is you know that we have to make them understand why though yes we take a lot of initiatives around their learning the, uh, we do take a lot of initiatives around their work but we have to let a few people go and that's i think that should be okay for the new ones to come in yeah ashish when she said marriage you wanted to say something <laughs> uh, oh yeah so uh, i think it, just by you know changing agent into advisor will not you know i think we're dealing with a very different generation and you know i think that's a big learning for us also here right so i think just by calling them advisor doesn't help you have to follow it up with with lot of uh, understanding on the way right and uh, and at the same time uh, i think if we try to invest some time in understanding what matters to them you know uh, like what she just mentioned about to even take that argument ahead you know some of them you know we have to let go actually the whole po the point is that you know there is a certain profile you need to be a good quality agent you know there is a way you know you have to be you have to be all out here you have to be you know you have to like 
you can't be a introvert if you're if you're a good quality you have to go out and meet people you need to have good listening power because people are taking the biggest decision you need to really really profile them well right so nothing bad with anybody out there you know the whole point is that there are certain qualities you need as a as an agent and we are keep we keep looking out for those people even if they give us little hope that they have it in them then we will spend a lot of time on them and train them invest in them so that they can so for us attrition is a very very important measurement very very important measurement one of the key four five metrics which we track every month or probably every 15 day every fourth night you know so so do you know it's not that it's a lag factor ho gaya to react karna hai you know the last discussions we had about attrition are about hone se pehle bhi kuch kar sakte hain kya so i think that's that's the combination of what we have done in last probably many quarters and years that you know we have come to this point that we have to see to it that we are you know just few days back we were talking about uh, how to hire right why is that we are we have to make sure that you know uh, we we make sure that we are able to find those quality agents out there who are looking for us you know so i think if 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 the focus is from hiring right to the point that we are able to solve their hurdles on the way and they see uh, you know again vishal i uh, uh, it's something very close to us so i am taking a little more time here so you know we keep telling this to ourselves in this these meetings which we do you know so called strategic meetings so we tell it tell this to each other that agar hamare yahan pe koi ek caller pnl head ban gaya aur bahut sare ban gaye then we have done our job so we say if there is someone who can probably go from a caller to a pnl and we have six seven of them out there we have done our job and there's no one out there right now but there there are many who are well on way right so you spoke a bit about the mindset of a broker it's a mindset that most people don't understand okay uh you said they have to be they can't be introverts they have to be extroverts uh i have noticed brokers are probably the most optimistic people on the planet ashish what is the one single biggest criteria if you were to tell me what makes a successful real estate broker in india in mumbai yeah so i think वो ब्रोकर ही क्या जो ऑप्टिमिस्ट ना हो या वो इंसान ही क्या जो ऑप्टिमिस्ट ना हो बट वो ब्रोकर ही क्या यू नो फॉर अस दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू नो वेदर इट इज आर इंटरनल एजेंट्स और इवन द मैग्नेट्स हु यू नो आर आर प्लेटफॉर्म वेयर वी एग्रीगेट ब्रोकर्स इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट दे हैव टू बी ऑप्टिमिस्ट यू नो बिकॉज इट्स 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 अ हार्ड सेल यू नो इट्स इट्स एंड एंड लाइक आई सेड यू नो यू इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू गेट द कस्टमर राइट सो यू नीड टू हैव पेशेंस एंड यू नो दीज आर वेरी very important virtues in life right you need to have patience you need to have a listening power you know so i think that that in mind i believe that you know if you are good in your subject see you can't be a 50% quality broker you have to be 100% quality broker which means you need to be good in your subject you need to know see if consumer has come to you he wants to save time he wants to save save effort so which means you know you are sort of one person this consumer can completely rely on in terms of the flow of information right first things first data points us us market mein kya chal raha hai us building mein kya chal raha hai us particular typology mein kya chal raha hai everything should be with you so that's the key factor i think you cannot become a successful broker unless you have a great access to the information and you know data i would say and i think our our journey ahead on product side will also be lot around data that's what we 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 want to do and the second thing is that you know like as if you have a good data if you have a good information then you have to have you know you need a patience you need to you can't rush things you know this is not you're not again the statements which i use every day in in this in this organization is we are not selling credit cards you know we are selling homes you know it's like i i i i use the statement for many years now it's like buying a aircraft for anyone you know so you we can't just uh, try to sell it as if you're selling or we are advising on a credit card you know so uh, our training uh, trainings and development initiatives are now so aggressively around giving them knowledge giving them information and you know the statement again which we all keep using among us is that for us a happy customer is a function of a happy agent and happy agent is a function of a quality agent someone who is empowered if there's a empowered agent then they will be able to to transact more and which means they have a happy customers out there so you are a crossover between uh the anarok guardians and the single shop yeah. what is this crossover 
So see, at the end of the day, as a brokerage, you know, we have built this business on productivity. We have built this business on agent quality. You know, it's I, it's being I'm being repetitive here. So, you know, we get this opportunity that you know we can show many apartments to the consumer. Uh, you know, our agent can probably uh, act as a partner in this search. You know, so this gives us a huge landscape. You know, in terms of you know uh, amplifying our services, add value, add services. So you know, if we want to value add service, like we have just recently gone to home loan uh, as a business, right? So uh, it's a value add to what we can give to our consumer, and there are so many other uh, other areas which we can get into. I think so. All these initiatives, these initiatives are going to be tech led, right? And at the end of the day, we believe that if we are able to con uh, continuously create a high quality margin business, for for us that means that you know we we have been because our journey is not like a typical VC funded organization. We have built with our own profits, as they say, right? So it's a very frugal approach. It's a very, uh, I would say, cost-effective approach. And whatever is the situation, we that's been part of our DNA, and we want to continue that DNA. That has worked for us. So I think that's the difference between a large institutional brokerage and us. That you know, for us, you know, if a certain ROI doesn't come, we are not into that business. Okay. So just to take the point to the conclusion, what does Homespa have? That say Anorak or Guardians does not have. What is your competitive advantage? I think the 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 whole point around the fact that we can spread across. You know, we are not committed to few projects. We can uh, uh, we can just uh, you know ex expand to every pin code of cities we are present. Gives us this uh, huge advantage against uh, some of the larger brokerages. And I think we we have a we have this advantage that we can progress faster. And I think our after we uh, take the next journey you know uh, i keep telling this to uh, reminding to to myself and and the team as well that the moment we are able to raise money successfully we it will be a day zero for us you know we just have our advantage but it's a day zero now to build a, a great franchise in in this in this such a huge opportunity is going to be a tall task but i think we have an advantage to create a first or one of the first few consumer broking brands out there you know one example which i always use for myself and again for the team is that you know when people order order pizza they can think of pizza hut pizza express dominos but when they look for property can they think of any name no we have the advantage or we have the opportunity not the advantage can we become one of those first four five when you think of a property and you want to reach out to a a certain advisor you should think of us as a as a consumer brand so basically if i can summarize uh anara guardians anadu they have the mandate model to a large extent you don't have that barrier that you have to sell only a particular project you have a wide book of projects can you uh, do you have a structure wherein you can ally with these players for particular projects so if they are looking at 100 projects uh, all these spread out you become one in in a way one of the channel partners for them Absolutely. does that model work uh, yeah yeah we are working very closely with almost every, every one of them and 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 huge respect for for you know they they have done unthinkable you know uh, credit goes to uh, to you know uh, anarog kanish puri sir you know the way they have executed in 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 such a less time and i think uh, now even guardian you know uh, zanadu you know uh, they have been uh, you know they have been they have faced some of the most difficult times in the sector and and really Uh, and and we are well aligned with them i think probably if i have to give you a ballpark number probably 30 35 40 percent business uh, in our portfolio comes from most of these uh, mandate players only and we have a very strong relationship with almost every one of them so basically they aren't competitors uh, as much as they are collaborators yes i would say so yes okay uh, mukesh uh, almost 90% of the business comes from two markets uh, mumbai metropolitan region and bangalore uh mumbai metropolitan region includes mumbai thane panvel so on and so forth uh within these markets is there a distinction between how each of these market operates uh in terms of the consumer and developer or broadly it's pretty much the same broadly it is pretty much the same only you need to choose right product and market it and you know talk to your client get them through the entire sales journey sometime consumer we have a change you know bombay people take call faster bangalore people think a lot than they, they take uh, you know calls otherwise mota moti uh, sara same hai 
So uh, Mumbai customer, the sales cycle with a Mumbai customer is a lot lower than Bangalore? Yes. Okay. And how do you, uh, Ashish, view a Bangalore developer versus a Mumbai developer? Uh, conventionally, the the access is the worst of all time is Noida. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Bangalore comes at the top. I'm going down from here. But Bangalore is at the top, Noida is the bottom. Mumbai is somewhere in between. What has been your experience with developers, not the consumer, developers there? Yeah, that's, a, that's a good question and I, I must also say that, you know, this also, you know, just to add to what Mukesh is saying before I get to this question also, that, you know, that also reflects on, you know, the cancellations as well. So, you know, if, 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 if the, uh, so we have very low cancellations in Bangalore as compared to Bombay because wherever people take too much of time, then they also, you know, sort of stick to their, uh, so, you know, behavior changes differently in a different, I would say not even city, uh, Vishal, you know, every 10 miles consumer change, you know. A Thane consumer behaves very differently from Mulun uh, consumer. Or a Mulun consumer will behave very differently from Pervaid consumer. So, so I think we have to adopt to it, you know, we as a, we are agnostic. So that's beauty of this business. We can adopt to any of the consumers. Now let's go to developers, right? So, so yeah, I, I, absolutely. See, now I, it's become very competitive for them as well, right? Uh, we've been told that there's not enough land parcels out there, you know, quality land parcels. So they're competing like anything. So they have to offer a certain level of service and or, or value to every stakeholder. And we are also one of the stakeholders. So I think now we see pretty much similar processes across all the good quality developers, especially the top 20, 30 developers are following good process around us. Uh, you know, they have a very well laid process. I think players like Lodha, Godrej, they were the, they were the uh, you know, companies who, who took this sort of, uh, they were the torch bearers, I would say, you know, when it all started, when the structure bit all started. But I think now pretty much everybody is the uh, is, is same. Definitely, you know, uh, the brand recall for Bangalore developers is very high. I think, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, some of the projects people line up to buy because, because of the fact that the consumer have a very great recall on in terms of the product quality, in terms of you know uh, the timely delivery and stuff like that, uh, which is probably not across in cities like Mumbai. Barring few developers, I think still the the, the legacy brands, I would say, barring them, I think uh, the customer belonging is still not uh, that that great in 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 Mumbai and Pune as compared to Bangalore. You know, if if you may, uh, North is a very very different market. Where I I would say no comments. <laughs> so since he said no comment, I'll come to you on that. So uh, Noida is a complex market. Uh, uh, lot of big players there. A terrible legacy of uh, stall projects, uh, scandals. Uh, what do you think it takes for a broker to operate in these sort of markets? Now Noida is the most famous, uh, infamous developer. But uh, there are other cities that have some records, they're smaller markets, so people ignore them. What do you think it takes for a broker to succeed in such markets? So if you offer a branded product to, in the, we, are, we, are, we have a very small setup in uh, Noda and I have seen, if you offer a quality and branded uh, product to the client, they are, they are happy to take it. Like Godrej comes in and sells in a, in a, in a one day, two day, you know, I have not seen that kind of madness or rust in most of the project in Bombay. Some of the projects happened. They have launched one uh, plotting project and they have sold in three three R. So, if there is a quality supply, there is a client for yes, it. Yes. So that market is also uh, has a lot of potential. If these are and, and there is there is there is an increase in that kind of uh, you know uh, uh, launches also. A lot of good players are moving. I've heard LNT is moving to Noida. I've heard Lodha is trying uh, to go to that location. Godrej has already taken a lot of portfolio. So, if you stick to these players, then you have enough and good business out there in that market also. But I think uh, other other developers who are realizing this, they're also now catching up. Early days maybe, without probably getting, you know, because we don't deal too much with them. We, uh, but you know, for us, the entry into the market is through developers also. If tomorrow, let's say, Lodha or anybody else enters into Hyderabad, Chennai, it's very obvious for us to get into that market, you know, because we have a, cert a certain relationship going with them, which has also happened in the past, you know, for us as we expanded. So, uh, so obviously, the more these developers enter into Noida market or any other such market, we will also probably increase our capacity and resources in that market. But at the same time, some of these developers are now realizing it. And they are also now catching up. So 
you know, we've been hearing a lot of good things about players like M3M, you know, stuff like that. Now, now they're sort of, you know, uh, we always talk about the fact that the one uh, portfolio which is missing from our, our space is DLF. You know, it's another quality developer, but we are not able to do much because we are not very aggressive in that market still. At this point of time, as I see my last so many years in this, in this domain, it's so well poised, it's such a win-win for a developer, consumer and even the advisors like us, you know, like that. So, it's good pricing, good supply and also, uh, I think, the great cycle ahead. So, Ashish, one of the uh, buzzwords in the stock markets is that uh, two things are happening. One is consolidation, one is developers from one geography expanding into newer geographies. Uh, Prestige coming from Bangalore to Mumbai, uh, Loda going from here to Bangalore. Uh, most people have some skepticism that it can be cracked. Uh, as someone who looks at the, these markets uh, from a bird's eye view, can it be done? I, I think it's, it can be done. You know, uh, and it's not going to be easy for sure. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, it's 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 becoming level playing field as we as we are moving towards consolidation, as we are moving towards sector getting more and more structured. So, uh, you know, if you have a clean balance sheet, then you have everything going for you, and and you have a good brand. Uh, you know, you have a good good control on your product. It, it, it's not that you, you do something good in uh, Bangalore and you do something bad in Bombay, it will not work. You will have to, uh, you know, live up to the promise and the expectation. But at the same time, I think, uh, you know, once you get into a new market, your first few projects have to be bang on. Which means that, you know, you need to really get the dynamics of, of demand supply of that particular market, of that particular product, so to speak, you know. At this, at this point of time, Vishal, you know, most of the ready-to-move apartments have been taken, right? There's hardly any ready-to-move uh, inventory left. And rather, uh, developers are going back to drawing board and now sort of thinking of not selling everything at one go. And, you know, we are, we are back in those times and, you know, you know, so that they can charge premium towards closer to possession. All this is happening at this point of time. So I think if a, a developer getting into a new city comes out with a good product, when I say good product, you're giving that value out there and you have a good brand backing you, you will definitely get good response. We have seen that happening in Pune with Loda. You know, the Karadi launch which sort of sold out in, in matter of hours, you know. Similarly, Prestige had seen good success in Mulun. So I think uh, we are seeing Godrej doing well in, uh, in some of the difficult markets. Uh, that's on the broad industry front. Let's come to Homesfy, its IPO uh, pursuit. Uh, you're opening soon. Uh, why does uh, retail real estate brokerage need money to raise capital like yours? Awesome. So I think uh, it's been it's been one of the very exciting journey for us. You know, uh, like we said, for, with with that no apartment in six months, to just about probably four or five lakh uh, brokerage earned in in the first year, and we did top line of close to thirty odd crores. So. I think we have seen cycle in a way, you know, we, we've learned this business hard way. Uh, uh, I have to stick my neck out and say that, that we know this business now some bit. So I think as the economy, as the market is going to go to the next level, you know, we all know that this is going to be one of the sunrise sectors and, you know, uh, and uh, I, I think we have a great, we are at a very, very good point to make most of this learning, this hard work which has been put by the team out there. Uh, I have to say that in between that uh, this organization is all about the people, you know, who have been part of this journey. There are so many of them who came as, you know, uh, you know, callers as Neha told and today are leading team of 50, 60 people and so many of them. And I think uh, this company is about them. The future of this company is around them. And I think that gives us this strength that we can take up the next level because of the quality team out there and the opportunity out there. Top 8, 10 cities, right? We are just in four of them. So for us to take those 8, 10 cities, take this model, which has worked well for us in, 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 in top two cities in this country, we need to take it to other, uh, other cities. And, you know, uh, going ahead, we want to also expand to NRI locations. Uh, you know, we are very, very optimistic about magnet model. So we want to continue investing in that model. You know, we see that some of the markets we are already present, we can do much more. 
you know uh, our average ticket size has been around just about 90 lakhs last year and i think there is a there's a potential to take it to probably 1.4 1.5 if we get into high ticket size luxury so there is a organic investment also within the system which is already there we need to just empower it and at the same time we have to get into new geographies and new product lines and going ahead uh, if if things go our way we would like to add some more value added services to the sector as well so what are the f- geographies you're looking to add you said four year there now four more are going to be added which four so you uh, so you know obviously uh, hyderabad has done pretty well last few years and surprisingly is one of the best market after mumbai we have to go there chennai you know uh, ahmedabad uh, even in north we have to open more offices you know our we are we are also eyeing i have to say that we are also eyeing tier 2 opportunity it's it's one of the upcoming opportunity uh, in the ecosystem so i think all this put together like i said top 7 8 cities we have to be there ahmedabad kolkata chennai hyderabad gurgaon you know these are the cities we have to be present and i think we are we are very close to setting up our dubai operations as well so that will be sort of where the light enters for our international operations uh, if we do well in that market we would like to uh, you know use that experience in other nri locations uh, you know overseas locations as well so i think yeah these are the expansion plans yeah the one name you have repeatedly mentioned in this conversation is magnet yeah. uh, i wanted to come to that part of the list uh, the last a uh, magnet is the uh, is a tech tool yes. for homesfy uh, i'll come to you sandeep on this uh, most people who are tech driven they say real estate has no prop tech okay uh, we often label listing websites as prop tech okay in your view what is prop tech for homesfy so not to, not to take away from them you know uh, they are listings they are classified listings magic bricks and all but they have they are actually also attempting some things i i know internally that uh, probably we can call uh, tech but prop tech for us actually is the how can we handle the customer's journey right from right from entering into into our uh, let's say operations and and helping him or her or the family as such to get an apartment and there's a lot of touch points that we have and basically how how do we, how well does the agent uh, or the uh, advisor know speak with the person what information does he have or profiling does and, and how can we with the tech tool helping with the profiling of the customer right uh, with with the data of the projects right the projects the locality all that should be present on the dashboard you know when somebody is conversing with with a client you know that all information has to be you know uh, in front of uh, the advisor and and that is that to me is something which is which is, which would enable the the advisors to uh, help them do their job better right so that that's something which is uh, which i would say you know, in a, in our in our parlance we call right now we we are a sales driven organization and we talk so much internally that we have to be a tech led company right and we being tech led means how do we increase the productivity of our advisors you know from from here to here you know and, th- and that means helping them with tech tools giving them the proper information of projects of the profile of the customer and and how can they actually help them solve the problems uh, that the prob- and the customer is needed to do uh, sandeep uh, uh, within this sphere that we are talking about uh, what is the gap that magnet looks to address that's not there in the market right so uh, see there are a lot of lot of small and medium sized brokers in the market who are actually trying to help gain trying to uh, help, uh, the customers buy property what they lack is is information again on projects on on how do they actually manage their process right now like we ashish said in the, uh, the start of the thing that a lot of them are still on excel sheets that we were and right? they don't have a platform you know we ca- we call our uh, platform that we give them a sales enable pl- platform where where their their team can actually come up uh, and and do their transactions right that's something which we are building like a saas platform for them right now uh, uh, it's it's under progress but but for them how can we enable them uh, to choose the right projects and also aid their team in doing the transactions so that they also have checkpoints on how the team is performing and we give them those tools and uh, you know dashboards to actually so uh, shitesh firstly what is magnet magnet is a, a tech based co broking transaction platform wherein we provide the support enablers to any real estate enthusiast that is not limited only to the brokers but to all the real estate enthusiasts to conclude more transactions this broker we ease their journey of concluding a transaction this on this uh, broker uh, network on this broker platform is it 
a inflection product that can disrupt the game or is it something which has incremental benefit uh, for a company for a uh, the broker market yes uh, so uh, vishal i am i'm pretty sure the magnet would be a disruption in the industry disruption in the market because it is the india's first co broking transactional platform here in we are not only focused on you know getting the leads or the prospects of the brokers but we are more focused on the transaction part you know and that is the biggest challenge also we are facing the change in the traditional mindset of a broker when in brokers are inclined towards working on their in their own mindset they don't want to come out that comfort zone like you know the problem we used to face we have must have experienced in the 90s jab psu employees are computerization ke liye bola gaya tha unko kya tha challenge ke nahi yaar computerization humne nahi jana hai sab kaam to hum karte the comfort se computerization pe kyon jaye that is a challenge which the which market is right now facing from the broker fraternity but at the very same time we have very classic examples where as the real estate enthusiast who are not from a real estate background but they are doing pretty well and they have done pretty very pretty well much with the magnet platform like i have a one classic example where there is one you know a uh, pathologist who is working with a leading hospital in mumbai he out of his just sheer interest in the real estate broking he joins the magnet platform he started sharing the leads and now he is working as a full time broker with me and you know what he is doing he is doing his job in a routine 9 to 5 job in the in his office whatever connects he gets whatever leads he generates he shares on the platform and then my my team works on it and we generate a revenue out of it and that second example there is a one lady who had, there was a classic example the covid who was who faces a layoff from the insurance industry in the during the covid times she came across our platform out of just sheer enthusiasm i want to just try something new let me try the real estate because since i have heard about real estate broking that people meant money in like in this let me also try it out so now she has set up his own office with a team of two and she is working full time into real estate broking so this is what my magnet platform is it is it provides the support enablers to any real estate enthusiast to conclude more transactions at the very same time you know trust and transparency these are the two very clear elements in the real estate broking and this is what we offer in the uh, this magnet platform if i could show you my app you know you can say that it's in 100% transparent app right from the moment the where a broker adds a lead into the system and to the point transaction is concluded it is so much transparent that even a broker can hear the conversation what my agent is having with the client just a click of button he can hear the recording of that conversation and it do not end here you know the main major pain point for a broker in the broker industry is the clean and the timely payments here on this platform he can even track his transaction journey once the booking is transacted is concluded what is the payment journey how much payment the client has made has the invoice been raised at what value the amount has been raised has the brokerage been released when it going to be released that is entirely visible on this platform so shitish so basically hesitant brokers uh, who didn't want to get on this app format uh, you have managed to bypass them or include them to some extent but real estate enthusiasts have come on the platform is so, my summary right no it is like this app is being hesitant been you know hesitated by the brokers to come and join but it has been very well accepted by a common man to come and operate on this platform okay okay so one more point like i would like to add here is we also provide digital service to the brokers uh, wherein they can they don't have the knowledge to actually do digital campaigns right and our, we have a good set of team members who can do digital campaigns and and one of the premise that we have is how can we increase our agent productivity across right not just sales but also digital so we have created an algorithm which basically uh, we do one single campaign and we distribute leads across multiple brokers right and that is one such tool which has enabled us to uh, be more productive overall right and to come to your earlier question like right? what is tech or what is prop tech to me in this side right? so having such tools and and such smart things which we can provide to our uh, community at large and also internal team which enables them to do their job you know uh, in a much more efficient way is is what uh, prop tech to me is uh, neha he mentioned about people who work in hospitals also becoming entrepreneurs uh, through this platform uh, is there a way you handle these sort of quasi employees versus the uh, agents who are on your platform as well as the routine employees is there a different model no so uh, vishal i would like to tell you that <clears throat> as an organization we see the potential in everybody who is wanting to come in and join the organization and be a part of the family now this is this could be for homes five the team members who are coming in and joining us or the magnet partners who are wanting to come and join us we see the potential in everybody and enable them with uh, initiatives like the learning platform magnet shala and homes five shala that we have 
the home fire shala for the internal uh, agents and magnet shala for the uh, magnet uh, magnets that we have what's the difference between both of them so that's uh, home fire shala is for the internal team members and magnet shala is for the magnets uh, the external magnets that we have so uh, we provide them um, trainings and learning uh, you know learning opportunities uh, not just in nature in behavioral pieces but also in the technical domain and um, and we help them to win we are only enabling them all of them to win that's that's what the difference is yes ashish uh, magnet is the or uh, is the tech tool uh, uh, i gather 80% of your business still comes from your in house sales machinery 20% are these external magnet uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, or like the doctor at uh, the uh, hospital staff that he mentioned about uh, how how do we see this journey going forward do you think it will become remain 8020 or this will evolve uh, no i think uh, it looks like that magnet is going to be a huge chunk of what we do in future and uh, it's just a beginning for us you know we are able to sort of have a we have we have been able to cover just one part of it that we can get them on board there is an interest in the sector and and we like shethit said we are we are in a, it's a co broking activity which is happening successfully but i think it's just the starting point uh, there is so much value in this domain you know i principally without any doubt come with this concept that there are quality brokers out there you know this whole thing around brokers that you know uh, is i know we all have dealt with brokers you know uh, if i would have dealt with five brokers in my life so far in my rental or you know whatever transactions probably just one or two of them would have not met the expectation or would have been like like what we call typical brokers but three of them my transaction was not possible without them the kind of value they added so i think there is a huge huge opportunity out there and it's not just about adding that tool it's about what more we can do with them so i think magnet is is not just about one application it it is going to be the whole ecosystem to make sure that we we get this agents from one level to another to make sure that we sort of back them up and if they have if they have this uh, you know uh, thing going for them that they want to take up the next level we want to be just one enabler out there and have a win win situation like i said you know nothing works without win win for the conventional broker who wants to get on the platform he spoke about the resistance to uh, brokers getting on a tech platform uh, is there a difference monetarily for a broker to be part of this homes fire magnet journey or uh, will, will he make more money with you or less money with you uh, i think uh, more than often he will make more money with us you know uh, definitely the worst case will be making the same money and <laughs> including that he gets so much support there's a technology there's a training there's digital services and there is even sometimes uh, site support all that is part of the bouquet while you make the same same uh, uh, brokerage but at the same time when uh, you know uh, we uh, do most of the heavy lift work you know and and they they are passing on uh, leads to us or they are also passing on visits to us and you know stuff like that then they end up doing higher numbers which enables them to do higher brokerage which they could have not done you know if they would have done it uh, themselves at the same time there are some uh, projects and some developers where we are doing good business and we get added uh, uh, you know incentives which also enables higher payouts for some of these uh, agents who work with us in magnet yeah okay uh my last couple of questions on this uh your listing yeah, it's uh, you mentioned 30 crore revenues uh, 3 crore or profit yes. um what is it that drives you as a promoter to do a listing was there no other alternative to raising capital as a majority shareholder in this company it's it's interesting so uh, i think uh, like i said you know we are a small company uh, we have long way to go uh and that excites us but uh you know we we always believed that we want to become institution you know i know it's easier said than done but this always plays in our mind that in terms of our practices our processes uh you know our uh, compliances you know we should we should always aim to be transparent and i always understood uh, as part of the financial services uh, in my early part of my career that once you try to get listed or you get listed you become more and more transparent and you become institution in a way you know you fast forward that journey so i think that 
sort of uh, we took that call collectively that should we fast forward their journey and and take it on you know and uh, the investors backed us uh, we got good quality investors who wanted us to take up take up this plunge and you know for us i always i always say that to the to 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 every stakeholder out there that can we become infosys of this business which is we end up setting benchmark in terms of the how uh, a, a good well run brokerage should operate in this sector we know it's early days we know we have long way to go there will be mistakes and challenges on the way but we definitely want to achieve that and i think getting listed makes us more and more focused and more and more compliant towards becoming infosys of this business okay, that's a that's a tall benchmark you have set for yourself uh, the last question uh you said you don't want to have an you want to create an institution uh you also said it's easier said than done so one of the things i noticed in your drhp was your own salary structure um uh, it's varied from uh sub 20 lakhs in 2020 and 21 you went below 8 lakhs uh and now 40 odd lakhs uh in 22 uh firstly is that the only source of income you have from this company is that the only amount or there is something else outside of this no yeah so obviously now it's the only source of the income i have uh, and uh, i completely uh, i'm completely committed to this uh, as as my uh, so in 2021 ashish made only 8 lakh rupees from homes fund yeah so i i can say that the reason uh, you know we were dealing with covid at that time and and i think uh, the most important thing which happened at that point of time was that uh, it was a very collective decision by everyone you know so uh, when i tell this to most of the people they they uh, they, they don't believe in it that you know the when it was a peak of covid you know i remember this one call when we all came together we set of some 40 50 or people who could come to that call at that point of time and uh, we were not able to make a de- decision that you know what salary cuts we should take how should we decide our next few weeks because it was it seems that there was no light at the end of the tunnel and all of us put together in that call could take that decision in like matter of probably 30 minutes that you know these are the cuts we will take this is what we will do if we do this much we will it was not me i, th- I think probably barring just 10 15 minutes of that call first 10 15 minutes and everybody else pitch in and so so my taking a salary cut in that year was part of that journey it was linked with the formula which was linked with everybody else and i think the beautiful thing which happened for us was that after that call there was no sal- no major salary cuts required you know i think just about in couple of months we were able to you know uh, what we decided we could do better than that and i think in matter of 6 7 months we were back to our normal numbers yeah. okay and my last question to you and mukesh uh at this point of time uh, you said covid provided you a rebound opportunity where are we in the cycle uh are we is the market hot is the market lukewarm is the market weak first ashish uh, first mukesh you then i'll come to ashish so we see lot of potential uh, vizal ji for the market there a lot of demand you know new demand has also been generated people are uh, buying uh, more often and i i'll say the real estate अब ऐसे ऐसे रास्ते पे है जहाँ जहाँ से बहुत अच्छा कर सकता है और रैली यहाँ से मिड टू लॉन्ग टर्म दिखती है स्पेस में आप अगर कब आप अगर कुछ न्यूज़ को रेफर करें तो यू नो अभी तक की सबसे बड़ी लैंड डील्स इंडिया में रिपोर्ट हुई हैं जो बिल्डर्स ने एक्वायर किए हैं यू सी बैंक्स ऑल्सो ऑल्सो बिकमिंग वेरी वेरी सॉफ्टर एंड जो भी असेट इस समय रुके हुए हैं उसको रीडेवलपमेंट करके काफ़ी तेज़ी से काम किया जा रहा है अक्रॉस बॉम्बे रीडेवलपमेंट की जो जो अपॉर्चुनिटी इस समय क्रिएट हुई है और अदर सिटीज आल्सो दैट दैट विल कम सो आई सी देयर इज अ गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर रियल एस्टेट एंड इट हैज जस्ट स्टार्टेड एंड इट विल लास्ट फॉर मिड टू लॉन्ग टर्म आशीष ही इज अ सेल्स पर्सन हेड ऑफ सेल्स सो लाइक यू सेड ही हैज टू बी ऑप्टिमिस्टिक यस यस आई डू यू एग्री विद इट फुल्ली पार्शियली नॉट एट ऑल सी आई थिंक दीज आर आई वुड से दैट द काइंड ऑफ यूफोरिया वी हैव सीन लास्ट ईयर मे बी it will be difficult to get that euphoria back we were operating from a low base and so on so forth i'm not i don't want to get too technical here but but obviously you know it was a dead or probably semi dead market unconscious market coming alive suddenly and and when you come alive then you dance right so it was dancing crazily but now i think we will have to you know it's it's not going to be easy right for sure uh, you know not every project is flying but at the same time like i said i on risk of being repetitive if you know your product if you come out with good pricing if in that market supply is not there and you are the one who is supplying 
you. Obviously, you will you will do well. So, how many? What percentage of projects are flying currently? You said not all projects are flying. What percentage are flying? I think uh, you know it is around 60, 70 odd percent work which are doing well. You know they are able to meet. You know if they have publicly sold told that you know this is the number they want to do at the launch, they are able to do that kind of a launch. I would say around 60, 70 odd percent. You know, uh, but I, I I clearly see that you know structurally. Allow me to say that in terms of the way economy is behaving, the way job market is behaving, the way the middle class of this country is behaving, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into data points, but the 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 gap of housing, the the basic quality housing is huge, and the urbanisation at play, you know, builders becoming conscious about what they have to give, what they have to deliver, the trust deficit which was there is 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 reducing. So all that is a very healthy mix, a very good cocktail of, you know, the sector. And we have seen that, you know, uh, sectors, uh, the rally uh, or, or the cycles have lasted lasted for good eight, ten years. So maybe it's not going to last so long, uh, but uh, it's going to be a good run. And I believe that we are not in middle, but at an early stage of this cycle. But at the same time, as the base grows, it's going to be very, very challenging because uh, dynamics will, will going to change very fast. On that uh, optimistic note, and and in Mukesh's word, euphoric note probably, uh, we'll end up this chat. Uh, thank you guys for this uh, conversation. A good uh, uh, extreme picture of the entire market. Uh, so thank you Ashish, thank you Mukesh, Neha, uh, Sandeep and Shatij.